Okay, if we talk about women in terms of, um, you know, labor and uh, the economic side of women versus men in the workplace, I think there is a certain amount of equality there. Uh, women in Bahrain and men are paid the same wages. There is no differentiation according to the labor law. On the contrary, for women, there are lots of privileges, like, for example, for maternity, they get, uh, uh, you know, with the new labor law, it's 60 days rather than 45 days before. And, um, uh, you know, women are allowed to work at night now. Before, in the old labor law, they were not allowed uh, to work at night. And also now they have more number of hours for feeding their babies after the deliveries. So they have lots of privileges because they are women. And also retirement, women retire five years before men. I think for women it's 55, for men it's 60. Um, but uh, on the other side, of course, as you know, uh, Bahrain, uh, on the social side, uh, women in Bahrain are not really, um, they are not being justified by our uh, laws. Um, for example, there is no family laws for uh, in Bahrain. There is uh, one sector, which is for the Sunni, there is a family laws, but for the Shia, there is no family laws, which means in case of divorce between men and women, uh, the mother does not have uh, set laws to protect her children. It's all according to uh, the, the research of the judge in the court. He goes back to the books, and of course, there is always uh, um, no justification for women. They are always on the men's side. They always favor men. They favor the husband against the woman. And in many cases, uh, the women, they really suffer because of that. Um, of course, you know that, uh, I mean, something which is we, we all face, uh, even in our religion, women are not the same as men. I mean, women inherits half of the men. Um, and also in, uh, in terms of uh, um, if somebody dies and he has only women or daughters, uh, some of his inheritance goes to his brothers and sisters. If, but if he has a one man, um, if he has one son, all his inheritance goes to his son, which is also, you know, a bit unfair. But uh, these are, you know, on the religion side. Um, and of course, uh, we all know how, you know, in the Islamic uh, law, a man can marry four wives, which also we find it very unfair for women. But this is my personal opinion. It's controversial. And I really feel it's not fair that, you know, a man should marry four wives without an excuse. Yes, um, I mean, whatever, like with the CEDA, we have an agreement with the CEDA, uh, which, uh, um, which is against the discrimination of women. Um, in Bahrain, you know, it's all in practice, you know. They cannot discriminate women from men, you know. Um, but of course, lots of companies, maybe they do the discrimination and they just get away with it. But according to the law, you know, they are not discriminated. Um, the hidden discrimination, there are like lots of, more unemployment between men, women and than men uh, because lots of companies prefer not to employ women because women will get pregnant and get married and be busy with her children. So you find that, um, you know, the companies are reluctant to employ women. Um, but this is their personal, uh, you know, uh, choice. Um, but in my experience, we've been very, very lucky with employing women, Bahraini women in this company. On the contrary, Bahraini women stay longer. They don't change jobs. Uh, they are very loyal. They, are, they come on time. Of course, when they get pregnant, and this is a period of time which, you know, they are more absent. But um, we, we find that they are more very, very hard workers, the women. Um, I don't know. I feel and in terms of laws, we are all similar. But in terms of, uh, you know, Bahraini women were educated much longer, uh, earlier than other uh, Gulf nationals. Uh, we had uh, school for women from the 1920s. 
Uh, on the other hand, in UAE and Qatar and this, I think, much later, uh, at much later stage. Therefore, you find lots of uh, more awareness between women. And we started having different societies for women uh, from the 1950s and 40s. So um, women are more, you know, proactive. Uh, they are very, um, you know, they, uh, they help, they do charity work. And uh, they've started earlier than other uh, countries. Um, but now they are catching up with Bahrain. Um, also in terms of uh, um, Bahraini women, of course, you get the, a bit more liberal in terms of you know, dressing like European clothes and not having to wear the, you know, the black veil. And you know, in Bahrain, you see it's normal. I think also Kuwait is. Uh, like us, you know. But other uh, countries, they are more traditional, I think. Well, I mean, in my opinion, the biggest drawback is our political situation in Bahrain. We have this problem with, you know, um, controversy and opposition. And uh, um, I mean, Bahrain is more democratic than any other Gulf states, you know. We have uh, elected house and we have uh, you know, Shura Council, and um, and we have many societies, like 500 societies in Bahrain, which you don't see in other Gulf states. Um, and that's why people are very brave. They talk and they express their opinion, and that's why you get more uh, politics, you know, than other Gulf states, you know. Um, it could be, you know, part of the progress to democracy, I think. But um, this instability, of course, it affects Bahrain progress, it affects women progress, it affects uh, the whole country.